Hi students, so in the previous video we have discussed about the ground inclusions or inside ground reinforcement techniques. The chief methods of ground inclusions includes the ground anchoring, rock bolting and sewing nailing. In the previous session we have discussed about all the three methods and the different types of these methods also. And now we have to discuss about the construction sequence of soil nailing. So in this session, we are discussing about the construction sequence of soil nailing. Before that, what is soil nailing? It is already discussed in the previous video. Soil nailing is a stabilization technique which is used to stabilize the natural slopes or excavated slopes. That is, soil is a ground stabilization technique which can be used to stabilize either natural or excavated slopes. The process employs drilling of holes and inserting the steel bars or nails into it and attaching mesh to the bar ends to hold the slope in position. Now, the construction sequence of soil nailing. It is a six stepped process and the construction sequence is as first step initial excavation, second step drilling of holes, third step insertion of nail reinforcement and grouting, fourth step construction of initial facing, fifth step construction of subsequent level and sixth step construction of final facing. First step, initial excavation. During the initial excavation, the excavation is carried out by trimming the original ground to the working platform level. After that, the first row of soil nails is installed. The depth of the initial excavation is kept in between 3 to 5 feet. The type of soil that is excavated may limit the depth of the excavation lift. The excavated platform must be of sufficient width to provide safe access for the soil nail installation equipment. So during the initial excavation, the excavation depth is maintained in between 3 to 5 feet and is the excavation is carried out by trimming the original ground to the working platform level. The second step is drilling of holes. The drilling of holes can be done either by means of air flush to percussion drilling, auger boring or rotary wash boring depends upon the type of the ground condition. The size of the drill hole shall be as per designed dimension. It is usually fixed at a range from 100 mm to 150 mm. In order to inject the ground, the typical inclination of the drill hole is set at an angle of 15 degree downward from horizontal and for removing the possible collapsed materials air flushing or water flushing is done during this stage. So the second step of soil nailing construction is drilling of holes. The drills are drill, holes are drilled to a uh, particular length and the drilling can be done either by means of air flush to percussion drilling or auger boring or rotary wash boring depends on the type of the ground condition. The third step is the insertion of nail reinforcement and grouting. The soil nail shall be provided with adequate centralizers at proper spacing and galvanization is provided for protection against corrosion. A grouting pipe is normally attached with the nail reinforcement during inserting the nail into the drilled hole. The grouting is from bottom up until fresh grout return is observed from the hole. The normal range of water cement ratio of the typical grout mix is 0 0.45 to 0 0.5. The nail insertion procedure is a two-staged process. In the first stage, the nail installation and grouting is carried out and 
During the second stage, the installation of strip drains is carried out. Nail installation and grouting. Tendons are placed in the drilled hole. A trimmy grout pipe is inserted into the drill hole along with these tendons and the hole is then filled with grout under the influence of gravity or nominal low pressure. Usually this nominal low pressure ranges in between 5 to 10 psi. If hollow bars are used, the drilling and grouting operations takes place simultaneously. And the second stage is installation of strip drains. Strip drains are installed on the excavation face continuously from the top of the excavation to slightly below the bottom of the excavation. Strip drains are installed on the excavation face and it is placed between adjacent nails and are unrolled down to the next excavation lift. Now the fourth stage construction of initial facing. Before the second lift of the soil is excavated an initial facing is applied to the unsupported cut. The initial facing is typically consists of a lightly reinforced short kit layer. The reinforcement includes belted wire mesh which is placed in the middle of the facing thickness. Horizontal as well as vertical bars are also placed around the nail heads for bending resistance. As the short kit starts to cure, a steel bearing plate is placed over the tendon so as to protruding from the drill hole. The bearing plate is lightly pressed into the fresh short kit. The short kit should attain its minimum specified compressive strength, that is 3 days compressive strength, before proceeding with subsequent excavation lifts. For the purpose of planning, the curing period of the short kit should be considered as 72 hours. So during the construction of initial facing, the initial facing is usually provided with a lightly reinforced short kit layer and a bearing plate is lightly pressed into this fresh short kit. The short kit has to attain its minimum compressive strength that is 3 day compressive strength before proceeding with subsequent excavation lifts. And the curing period for this short kit is usually fixed as 72 hours. Now the fifth step construction of subsequent levels. The steps from 1 to 4 are repeated for the remaining excavation lifts also. At each excavation lift, the strip drain is unrolled downward to the subsequent lift. A new panel of WWM is, that is the wired mesh, is then placed overlapping at least one full mesh cell with the panel above. The temporary short kit is continued with the previous short kit lift. So, the step 1 to 4 is repeated for the remaining excavation lifts also and for the new panel of and, and for new excavations a new panel of the wired mesh is also provided every short kit is also provided as initial facing in each steps now the sixth step construction of final facing the final facing is constructed when the bottom of the excavation is reached and the nails are installed and tested. The final facing may consist of cast inside reinforced cone kit, reinforced short kit or prefabricated panels. Weep holes, food drains and drainage ditches are constructed to discharge water that may collect in the continuous strip drain. During the construction of final facing, the final facing is usually constructed when the bottom of the excavation is reached and the nails are installed and tested. The final facing may consist of either cast inside reinforced cone kit or reinforced short kit or prefabricated panels. Usually weep holes, food drains and drainage ditches are constructed during this stage in order to discharge water from the strip drains. 
So this is the six. This figure shows the six step procedure for the construction sequence of soil nailing. In the first step, it is the excavate initial lift. Second step, drill nail, drilling of the nail hole. Third step, install the grout, install and grouting. Installation of the nail and grouting. And in the fourth step, placing your initial facing, that is the uh, short grating. And in the fifth step, the construction of subsequent levels is made. And in the final step, the final facing is placed. And during this uh, step, the food drains or the weave calls or the drainage ditches are provided for dewatering. So, this is the six step construction sequence of soil nailing. And in the first step, uh, from the figure, we can know that the depth of the excavation is shown as 3 to 5 feet and also the excavation is made up to the platform level, marking platform level. And in the second step, the drilling of the hole is made and the tendons are placed during the third step. And along with the tendons, grouting is made. If the placing of tendons and grouting is done simultaneously, we should have to use a hollow bar for the purpose. And in the fourth step, the initial facing is fixed. Fifth step, the construction of subsequent level. And in sixth step, the final facing is fixed and the four trains or weave holes or drainage ditches are provided for the purpose of divide. Now the design considerations for soil nailing. There are eight considerations are to be made. First one is strength limit. The limit state at which potential failure or collapse occurs. Service limit. The limit state at which the loss of service function occurs resulting from excessive wall deformation, height and length of the uh, soil nail, vertical and horizontal spacing of this soil nails, inclination of the soil nails for, injecting, uh, for the purpose of injecting the grout efficiently, the ground properties, nail length, diameter and maximum force, drainage force penetration and external loads due to wind and hydrostatic forces that is we have to consider while designing the soil nails we have to consider the following criteria that is the strength uh, considerations serviceability height and length vertical and horizontal spacing between the soil nails inclination of the soil nails the ground properties the nail length, diameter and maximum force to be provided and the environmental conditions such as drainage, forced penetration, the chances of action of wind and hydrostatic forces etc. So now we have completed the construction sequence and design considerations for soil nailing. So, the properties of a nailed soil wall or a nailed soil slope is the mechanical properties or the strength of the ground is improved after this soil nailing. So it is a better option. It is one of the most effective and economical method of this inside ground reinforcement technique. So hoping that all of you have understood about the ground inclusion techniques and the construction sequence of this ground inclusion techniques, uh, ground anchoring, rocking and uh, soil nailing. Okay, thank you. Now, we comes to the end of the module 4, that is grout inclusions. So, in the next video, we have to discuss another topic. Okay, thank you.